Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. Today is the long-awaited grand tour of Mastering Manga 3, my newest how to draw book. Well, it's long-awaited by me anyway. I've been looking forward to doing this video, showing you uh, what makes this book different from Mastering Manga 1 and 2. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, with Mastering Manga 3, I knew it was time to take things to a higher level. By the time you get to the third book, you're ready for more challenges. Uh, and I think this book is sort of for the intermediate artist, uh, or someone who's uh, at least ready to, to try to push themselves uh, to greater detail, greater accuracy, uh, take on uh, challenges. And uh, I even took on challenges in terms of the artwork uh, that you find throughout the series. Uh, I feel like with this one, I put in extra time and care to try to... Um, take my own work to a higher level. Now the first chapter is called Characters and Styles, and the real emphasis is on the word styles. I've always been a bit frustrated by the fact that how to draw books tend to present a single style uh, that is supposedly representative of the manga style, whatever that's supposed to mean. And so I decided with this chapter I was really going to break free of that and show you lots of different uh, styles, some of them uh, really quite radically different one from the other. So to demonstrate the difference uh, in approach between the first uh, couple of books and this latest book, I thought I'd bring out Mastering Manga 1 and sort of remind people of uh, a typical uh, illustration style used in that book, uh, geared towards the beginner, so keeping things uh, a little bit simple, hopefully still accurate to published manga work, but not uh, presenting people with uh, super challenging stuff right off the bat. Well, this uh, newest book, I think you will agree, uh, presents a, a rather more detailed character here, and um, uh, to my purposes, more importantly, a more specific looking character, you know? His hairstyle, his clothing, this is not like a um, uh, generic uh, manga guy. It seems to be a specific character from an actual book. And part of my philosophy here was to present a series of different characters that looked like that. They looked specific. They didn't look like generic characters. Uh, let me show you another one. So here is one that I'd say is a, a sort of shonen style, a, a comic book character that you would expect to see in an action story of some kind. This already quite different from the one you saw in that previous le uh, lesson, but let's go ahead and jump to quite a different style again. This is a lesson called Shoujo Realism, uh, and uh, again, quite different from what you saw during that previous lesson. This one showing you how to uh, create facial proportions that are a little closer to real human anatomy. Um, and uh, indeed, from one lesson to the next, I was constantly trying to show the, the rich variety of styles th that can be learned within uh, the manga world, and my theory was that the more of these different styles you learn, the more you can sort of uh, blend them together uh, to create your own style uh, that really is one of a kind. One new feature that I included in these books was this idea of the torn out sketch page to sort of uh, give you a sense of the preparatory work that people do as they're creating characters, as they're working on their manga uh, projects. And throughout the book, I think three or even four different times, you'll see this uh, type of sketch page motif used uh, to uh, present different types of material. Some of you may remember the uh, video where I uh, started working on this character that was uh, a more, uh, as I said, specific looking character. Definitely comes from some sort of a sci-fi project. I thought with my Mastering Manga 3 that was really one of the things that I could do was get into some of these more detailed particular things. Uh, for example, science fiction. I wasn't able to delve into that really uh, in the previous books. I thought now is my chance finally to open the door to some of these other uh, worlds that I hadn't uh, been able to explore yet in these books. Now the step-by-step -step lessons are, uh, as always, at the heart of the book, and indeed there are 40 step-by-steps compared to the 30 step-by-step uh, -step lessons in the previous books, but uh, I believe that a lot of these extra uh, types of material can be just as important, like this one on character consistency, definitely not something that was covered uh, in the previous books. This one helping you to sort of realize how important it is to get the relationship of the facial features consistent from one uh, drawing to the next, and it sort of challenges you to begin to see the location of the nose and so forth, and how much space is between the eyes, uh, how these slight differences can make quite a big uh, difference in terms of perceiving this character as consistent from one page to the next. 
Now, to some degree, you could say that this is the mastering manga that was uh, designed by my readers, <laughs> insofar as I was paying attention to the requests people had uh, over the years. Could you please include this type of material? And the animals was one that came up again and again. People wanted to have some lesson devoted to drawing animals. Now, you may look at this and say, well, that doesn't necessarily look like a manga-style uh, dog. That just looks like an ordinary dog. Uh, but uh, indeed, in some manga projects, uh, that's the way animals are drawn, but not all of them. And uh, let's go ahead and have a look at one which is a little more distinctively uh, anime style in its approach. This cat, for example, and uh, some of you might even recognize, very much inspired by uh, Gigi, the cat from uh, Kiki's Delivery Service, um, to try to show that different approaches, even within uh, the topic of drawing animals, you're going to see different ways of doing it from one manga. Uh, project to the next. The second chapter is uh, devoted to poses and action. I thought it was time to really, um, you know, meet this problem of poses head on. In the previous books, there was only space for uh, three step by step lessons devoted to poses. I thought we can do better than that, and we got to do better than that with Mastering Manga 3. Uh, there's a whole chapter just filled with material devoted to poses. It starts off with fairly basic poses, like uh, characters who are just standing there, although I think you'll agree that even that can be quite a challenging pose to draw well. Uh, and even here you see, again, uh, this effort to draw a specific character, someone who's not like just generic guy. He's, he come, seems to have come out of the pages of an actual manga book of some kind. Uh, but let's look at uh, the poses as they get a little more advanced. This running pose, for example, takes a little more time and effort to learn. Uh, and what I like to do with uh, lessons like this, you get three pages for the step-by-step -step lesson, and then you have this fourth page, which I feel is perfect for devoting to supplementary material. Here you see how I took that same pose, uh, and I showed how it could be made a little less intense by having her uh, foot a little closer to the ground, the arm in a different pose. Here's where you, you're sort of um, intensifying it just a bit, and here's where you're really getting her leaning into the pose, uh, giving you sort of general general advice on, on how one pose can be presented in a variety of ways uh, depending on how much intensity you want it to have. This is one of the most advanced uh, or most challenging poses in the book, a sort of a classic uh, shoujo type illustration, a boy carrying a girl. I would not have ventured into something like this in the first uh, two books, would have maybe considered it too challenging, but I thought with Mastering Manga 3, they're ready for it! Gosh darn it! Let's go ahead and uh, uh, try something a little more tricky. Here's another one of these pages of supplementary material, trying to get to the heart of what makes a pose look uh, stiff versus more lively and natural. Uh, and uh, I was happy with uh, the way the information is presented here. Indeed, she does sort of look like a, I said, like a tin soldier almost, just standing straight up and down, giving you advice that you can indeed apply to uh, almost any character you draw. I had fun doing this page on body language. It was almost kind of an experiment. You know, what happens when you draw the same character with the uh, exact same facial expression, uh, almost a blank expression? I mean, she doesn't look like she uh, is conveying anything in particular by way of her face, but uh, certainly the body language here uh, is making us feel that she's sad, and so uh, I, I thought that was a good way of maybe showing the importance of body language, that you shouldn't forget about it. Uh, as you uh, create your manga stories. Now, for many people, learning about poses uh, is really all about learning uh, action poses. That uh, is, It's a challenging thing, but it's certainly something that uh, a lot of people want to learn how to do. I wanted to show you how I took this lesson uh, and turned it into quite a different lesson later on. That's right, it's chibi time. <laughs> and so what you can do really is kind of compare the two different versions and see what changes uh, as you turn them into chibi characters. There's at least uh, one other lesson devoted to chibi characters, but let's have a look at uh, some of the un unusual types of uh, character drawings that I was able to get into that I was never able to cover in the other two books. This lesson on drawing a manga-style monster is certainly uh, something that I was not able to delve into in the first uh, two books. You only have so many pages, and you can't uh, get into these more specific things. I had fun uh, being able to uh, go down these different paths towards types of characters that I had not been able to cover previously. Here's another one. 
This uh, mecha-type robot character, definitely something that I had never covered before, and, uh, and again, inspired by requests from the readers who said, yeah, can you teach us, uh, give us a lesson on drawing manga-style robots? And of course, I always want to take it to another level and teach other things. Here you can see the different styles of robotic armor, you know, going from very angular to a little more smooth, very simplistic, and here's this, my favorite, <laughs> the rusted out, falling apart robot design. Always trying to, you know, have a step-by-step -step lesson, but also give the supplementary material that helps expand it uh, for use on characters of your own creation. Here's a double page uh, spread devoted to action poses. This one I think I might have talked about in a previous video quite a long time ago showing uh, the use of forced perspective makes it look like she's running towards us more quickly uh, than in this other one. Here uh, I was mentioning just the other day about the importance of hair and clothing in terms of action. Here's the exact same pose drawn twice but in one of them her hair and clothing are not really reacting. Uh, to the motion that shows the importance of uh, how different she looks, even though the pose is almost identical, uh, just by changing the hair and the clothing. The last part of the book is called Finishing Touches, and this is where uh, I was able to get into, again, a lot of topics that I just wasn't m able to squeeze into the previous books. Here again, hopefully a good example of uh, me trying to take the artwork <laughs> in the book to a higher level. Certainly never uh, created uh, an illustration with quite this much detail, I don't think, uh, in the previous books. Here's another one of these sketch pages that I included. Uh, this one devoted to designing costumes, showing you the sort of preparatory work that most um, manga creators do prior to creating their story, working on the different, you know, uh, ways that the clothing might work, how the designs would go, and so forth. Here's a step-by-step -step lesson devoted to fancy clothing. What I did is I took that previous lesson that was the sort of sci-fi character and then show how you can build on top of that pose to focus on uh, learning how to draw, you know, a, a highly individualized uh, piece of uh, costuming here. Also showing, you know, the clothing folds and the wrinkles and how you make it look like it's in motion. Uh, all of this stuff, just um, going to a higher level, uh, challenging the artist uh, in a way that I wasn't able to get to in the first two books. I always feel it's important to go beyond step-by-step -step lessons to giving material about comic book creation. Here's one where we have a, a, a lesson showing how this panel has a background in it that is kind of uh, competing with the foreground and making it hard for us to see her. Uh, the benefit uh, uh, displayed here of separating those two elements, creating a nice clean silhouette around her so that we see her more clearly. Uh, when you're doing dialogue scenes, it can be tempting to just keep drawing those characters' heads again and again. This one's showing you the benefits of uh, spicing things up a little and getting some aerial shots in there and so forth. Uh, in many ways, my favorite part of the book, really, when, I, when you, you start getting into the nuts and bolts of comic book creation. Using photo reference, definitely a topic I was never even able to mention, I don't think, in the previous books. Here we go showing how uh, the photo helps you get the basics, but it does not determine exactly what your illustration looks like. It's sort of uh, um, a guide that provides the foundation, uh, and this step-by-step -step shows you um, how I changed from what I saw in the photo uh, to what I created in uh, you know, a, a typical background illustration that I might use for a real manga story. Color was a topic that I actually stayed away from in Mastering Manga 1 and 2. I felt that it was important to get the foundations of drawing before you took on the challenges of uh, coloring things. But with Mastering Manga 3, finally we can get into this topic, uh, uh, hopefully in a fairly thorough way. Uh, this one showing the difference between hot colors and cold colors on the exact same illustration. This one giving you some guidance on uh, at least a simple basic way of uh, using a two-color system. Uh, to create an anim anime style uh, effect. And uh, here, one of my favorite things, showing the difference between uh, the every color in the rainbow approach, which you see there on the left, uh, compared to a more muted, understated approach. Here's a lesson devoted to using markers, definitely something I wasn't uh, able to touch on in the previous books. I went back to, and used that same uh, sci-fi pose and showed how I might use markers to build layer by layer uh, until I got to a uh, finished looking full color illustration. 
Designing your manga's logo, that's something I wasn't able to touch on in the previous books. Here I uh, took just the word sample logo so that we would stop paying attention to the words, pay attention instead to the lettering uh, and the feeling that you get as you look at these exact same words uh, presented to you in uh, radically different ways. And uh, over here a few words about designing uh, front covers, showing you how in Brody's Ghost the sort of different uh, thumbnail steps that I went to as I designed that cover, and speaking of which... The final lesson in the book is devoted to designing your own cover, sort of bringing together all these different things from the book about the logo, the, uh, uh, the poses, and uh, creating, uh, if you dare, your own finished looking book. Mine, of course, called Blushies by Mark Crilly, book one. Are you guys looking forward to my new series, Blushies? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It doesn't exist, but who knows? Maybe someday. So there you have it, Mastering Manga 3. I wasn't able to show absolutely everything that's in the book, but I gave you a pretty good overview there, and I uh, want to sincerely say thank you to anyone who supports me uh, by getting this book, and indeed those of you who got the previous books, uh, you have my undying gratitude. Uh, it really does mean a lot to me, and I hope that these books are able to help you when you sit down to create your own manga stories. But I think it's time for me to wind this video down. I want to thank you all for watching it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.